Hello lovely people, welcome to the Geek Cupboard, I'm Penge, and welcome to Space Wreck, a post-apocalyptic retro role-playing game with a focus very much on the role-playing side of things. So we're going to end up on a spaceship, a wrecked one presumably, and we have to deal with whatever situations we find ourselves in. And the big thing about this game is that there are many different ways to deal with those situations, so we have to try to play to our skills as best we can. If we're playing as a big tough character, we can get involved in fights, but we're not going to be that good at doing compute hacking. And then on the flip side, if we're a charismatic character, we can try to talk our way out of things, but we're not going to be that good in a fistfight, that kind of thing. All of our actions have consequences, it's all non-linear, and there are many different endings depending on what we do in the game. Visually, it looks a little bit like the original Fallout games, that sort of 3D isometric view. It looks a little bit like that, it's got that sort of retro feel to it, which I do quite like. It sounds really good, I think we're going to have a fun time with this, and I do love a role-playing game as well, so I thought we had to go and have a little look at this one. So without any further ado, away with us to space. In the 22nd century, humanity is spread across the solar system. Wild capitalization of the markets has sparked bloody clashes between corporations and asteroid miners, spiraling into anarchy. You are an inexperienced captain, fresh out of the academy on your first voyage. Being a complete outsider to the crew, they don't seem to have much respect for you or your command. To make matters worse, your ship is targeted by asteroid pirates, and the blast of a stray ion torpedo damages the fuel controller chip. Somehow the ship manages to limp away to a nearby space wreck in hopes of finding a replacement. But someone has to go get it. The crew proposes a lottery to determine who will. Despite your status as the captain, you feel compelled to participate. Everyone draws the straws but you get the short one. You manage to cover only half a distance when your shuttle unexpectedly runs out of fuel. Luckily, there is an abandoned space station nearby. You land, hoping to replenish the fuel tanks of the stranded shuttlecraft. Air hisses as the hatch opens. Stepping outside on broken tiles of the derelict station, you have no idea what to expect. But one thing is clear, there is no way forward without fuel. Okay, so the long and the short of it is that we're now trapped on a wrecked space station and we have to go and try to find some fuel to refuel our little shuttle to get off the wrecked space station and continue our search for a replacement fuel controller chip or whatever it was because that got damaged on our original bigger ship that we're the captain of because that one got attacked by space pirates. I think that sums everything up. Oh my goodness me, what a pickle we find ourselves in. Also, I do suspect there might be some sabotage going on here. I think there might be some shenanigans happening, particularly with the whole fuel running out on the shuttle thing. That seemed a little bit suspicious, didn't it? Also, I think maybe even the whole bit where we drew straws was possibly rigged against us. It did say there that the crew of our bigger ship didn't like us very much. They didn't really respect our authority. So maybe they rigged the whole straw drawing thing to make sure we got the short straw to end up coming down here looking for various bits and bobs. And then, yeah, the fuel running out on the shuttle does seem a little bit suspicious as well. So possibly this was part of the crew's plan all along to make sure that we got out here and never came back again. I do not know, but okie doke, right, so what do we have going on? Annoying voice over radio. Okay, hello. Captain, wake up. Have we been asleep? Have we nodded off at the controls of the shuttle or whatever? I don't know. Captain, wake up. You have arrived. Indeed, I just landed. The shuttle tanks are completely empty. You must find fuel here. Okay, that's the big job. Find some fuel. Fuel, got it. Let me just get ready. Create character. Oh, this is very exciting. Choose your captain's background. Okay. Percon. There's a thing there saying Percon. I assume that's some sort of corporation. Okie dokie. So, captain's background. Online video celebrity Joanna. Diplomacy. Juvenile offender hacker Noah. Tech and stealth. Gun enthusiast Sam. Combat or create your own character from scratch. Okay, right, I see. So we've kind of got template characters here that deal with these particular things. So Joanna's diplomatic, Noah's techie and stealthy, and Sam is quite fighty, or we could make our own. I think we're gonna make our own, absolutely. Let's pick our own character from scratch, thank you very much. Oh, here we go. Oh, look at this. This is all very exciting. Create your character by distributing main attribute stat points. Your decisions here will open or close opportunities in the game. When ready, press the accept button. Okay, so what do we have going on? We've got ourselves five attributes over here. 
So physical focus, perception, charm, and work. Then we've got params. Okay, so hit points, action points. It's a little bit fallouty again with action points, damage, evasion, carry weight, and type. Okay, and then skills. There are different skills as well. Okay, so attributes are different to skills then. Okay, so we've got speech, sci-tech, tinker, sneak, melee, and ranged. Okay, oh, this is exciting. Level one, no XP. Janice Percons. Hang on, can we change our name? Oh, yes, we can. Okay, Janice Percons is a very lovely name, but we're not going to be called Janice Percons. Absolutely not. No, 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 that will not do at all. I think we all know, really, who we're going to play as. Of course, it's Betty Cupboard. It was always going to be you, Betty, wasn't it? Who else could we turn to in a situation like this? We're stuck on a spaceship out in the middle of nowhere. The odds stacked against us. Things are looking grim. We had to play as Betty. Betty will sort it out, I imagine. So now I think what we have to do is try to work out exactly what type of character we'd like Betty to be because that'll help us sort out these things over here so what do these do exactly so physical is your general physical fitness affects health melee damage inventory space and more note this is also your size okay so physical is also how big we are so maybe there are certain things that we can't get through if we're too big so if we max our physical out what is the maximum what's the top number we can have five oh okay not that many actually i thought it was going to go up to ten but okay so five so if we max that out we're going to be very, very good, you know, very sort of healthy and very fighty, but we're also going to be huge. So we might not be able to fit through smaller gaps. Is that what I'm reading into that? Or am I reading that wrong? I don't quite know. And then focus is discipline and mental strength. Ability to concentrate on the task at hand. High focus also lets you detect lies. Ah, that could be quite handy. Affects action points. Okie dokie, that's quite important. Critical hit fail chance. Combat initiative. Melee damage. Evasion. Conversations. Skill check rerolls and more. Note. With extremely low focus, you cannot keep track of long conversations. Okay, <laughs> that's quite fun. So if you've got low focus and the conversation goes on a bit, you just drift off. You can't follow it. You're thinking of something else. You're thinking about what to have for your dinner tonight or whatever. So, okay, I quite like that. Right, so that's quite important as well. Perception, we start with two for some reason. I don't quite know why we start with two perception, but okay, no. eyesight, hearing and the rest of the senses. Also intuition and general awareness. Good perception allows you to read people, affects conversations, firearm range, map awareness. Okie dokie. Charm. Likeability of one's persona. The more charming you are, the more welcoming other people are to you, ready to listen, and even accept your suggestions. Affects first impression, conversations, and sex appeal. Okie doke. Right, that seems quite fun. And then work. Genius is 1% talent and 99% hard work. Don't rely on attributes you were born with. Invest work to improve your skills. Every point in work grants you one additional skill point. Note, this attribute is also directly related to the rate to which you gain XP. Current XP rate, 40%. Okay, so that means, hang on, so if we up that, we get another skill point. Oh, I see. Ah, and our XP rate has gone to 80%. Okay, so if we leave that at 1, that means that when we pick up some XP, we're only going to pick up 40% of what it's actually worth. Whereas if we up that to 2, we get 80%. So we're going to level up quicker with a higher work stat over there. Okay, right. So we've looked at those. Maybe after we've picked our attributes, we'll pick our skills later on. But I think, yeah, we'll have to go for these first. So really, that kind of leads on to the question of, yeah, what type of character do we want Betty to be? I think it could be quite fun being charming. I think that sounds like a lot of fun. Go in there and just be really charming. Betty Cupboard is very likeable. Everybody loves Betty across all her different various incarnations on the Geek Cupboard. She's been lovely on all of them. So I think maybe we go for charm. Also, I do think we have to try to max one of these out. We have to properly go to town with one of these and specialise. I think if we did sort of put the points all across the board, that's going to make us a bit of a jack of all trades, but a master of none. And I kind of feel like, really, we have to excel in one of these so we can fall back on it if everything else goes wrong. If we're sort of okay at most things, we might possibly struggle. But yeah, if we're really good at physical, for example, we can always fall back on that. So if everything has gone wrong, we can just go, ah, okay, right, but he's punch you then or whatever. It's kind of you know, a good idea to have one to fall back on, I think. But I do quite like charm. That could be quite fun. Uh, what's type? What does that do? People sometimes have trouble telling if you're a man or a woman. Something just doesn't fit the stereotypes. Your voice, size, walking, dressing, behavior, or anything else. This disposition has granted you greater awareness and insight. Uh, oh, hang on. Oh, oh, I see. Oh, okay, right. So stereotype 
you're a stereotypical woman with a natural plus one charm. Oh, I see. Right, so that's if we're playing as a woman character. So a man character, a stereotypical man with an inherent plus one physical bonus. Oh, that's why we had the extra perception. And then that one there is, is, yeah, is neither. We're ne identifying with neither gender. Okay. Okay, so what do we do with that? Um, I mean, if we are going down the charm route, that is okay. Uh, that is quite good. We get plus one charm from that. So maybe if we max that out, that leaves us still with four points left to put elsewhere. I think that's quite good. I want to point in work because I kind of feel like we should try to boost our XP a little bit. So that's quite good. So we've maxed out charm. We've got a point in work. We have three more points left. I mean, that one could be quite useful as well. Affects conversations. But also, if we are trying to charm people, we're going to need to be focused because we're going to need to pick up on what they're saying. So I think really a point in focus and then maybe a point in perception and then another point in focus and just leave physical as one. So we're really not a physical character at all, but we're quite charming. We're very charming. Or do we knock down charm and put that in focus? So be incredibly focused because that does say it affects conversations. So I mean, that could be quite key. Perception of two, but that allows us to read people. Okay, hang on, take that out and put that there. I know I said we didn't want to become a you know jack of all trades and a master of none, but I think physical of one means we're definitely not going to go down any of that kind of stuff. We're going to struggle to carry stuff. That's the only thing that affects our carry weight and inventory size and stuff. It carries 5.70 out of 22. So I don't quite know what we've got on us right now, but we're carrying something. So we're not going to be able to carry too much stuff. Um, yeah, work is quite good. So we're going to get some XP ticking up quite well. Charm, I do think, oh, do we put that up as five and then drop one of these down? I'm not entirely sure. Yeah, good perception allows you to read people. That's kind of what we want. But focus is also to do with conversations. And with low focus, you can't keep track of long conversations. Do you know what? Let's knock perception down and put charm up. Let's really turn on the charm. We're gonna have a very, very charming Betty cupboard. And now we have three skills, but speech has gone up to two already. I assume because charm is maxed out at five. Is that why? I assume that's why that has happened, is it? Yeah, okay, so if that goes up to four or five, we get a point in speech. Hang on a minute, hang on. That kind of changes things a bit. If we have charm as four and focus of four, oh, we get a point of sneak, kind of for free. Oh, that's quite good though. That's quite good. What if we had a perception of four? That's ranged up to two. Okay, okay. I do see us using ranged weapons. We are gonna have to take a weapon at some point because we're gonna end up in some sort of fight. But I think melee is gonna be bad because we have a physical of one. If we get involved in a fist fight, we're just gonna be bludgeoned into pieces. So I think we have to try and go down the whole ranged route. But I think still we have charm like that and we have that like that. So focus three, perception two, charm five, work two. So we've got three skill points to dish out. Speech has gone up. I think maybe take another point in speech because that's what we're going to try to do. We're going to be very charming. Sci tech does seem quite good. What's that? Uh, implied science and modern technology allows you to interact with increasingly complicated or protected computers, even hack them. That could be quite handy as well. Speech is just the yeah, ability to win arguments and convince people and such like. Tinkering is picking apart, repairing and modifying things. Oh, that's quite good. Good tink helps to maintain equipment in good shape more easily. Sneaking is, of course, sneaking around. Melee and ranged. Possibly, possibly we should take a point of ranged just to give us a chance in a fight if that happens. But I would like to get a point in both Cytec and Tinker. Do you know what? We're going to do it. We're not going to be fighty at all. We're going to have to avoid combat at all costs, whether it's close-up melee combat or ranged combat, because we are pretty useless at both. And we're not that good at sneaking, I suppose. If we do level up, if we do get enough XP and level up a little bit quicker than we would do with the work of one, we could give ourselves some skills over here. But there we go. I think that's what we go for. So we've got nine hit points. That doesn't seem very much at all. So we're quite fragile. Six action points. That could be quite a lot. So we can run away. That's quite important. We can leg it out of there and get out of danger. Um, damage of three. Okay, so we don't cause that much damage. Evasion of two. Okay, indicates how well you can avoid getting hit. 
that's quite good. And yeah, we can carry 22 units of stuff. Okay, I think we're ready. I think that is the character that we're going to play as. Is that a good character? I have no idea. But you know what? It's Betty Cubbard. She's a charming Betty Cubbard this time around. I think that's going to be absolutely lovely. Subject fit for the position of Captain Negotiator. Subject's best asset is its communication skills. Absolutely, yes, that's what we're going for. Scores. Negotiator 70%, Covert Operative 42%, Engineer 40%, Hacker 40%, Soldier 28%. Yeah, we're no soldier. Okay, so now what do we do? Red flags. Fragile. Can die from a single hit. Combat not recommended. Yes, we do have lots of action points to run away if we need to. We're going to do lots of boldly running away. Limited computer skills. Can use most of the computers, yet sometimes there's an accidental crash. Okay, that's fine. Civilian. Absolutely useless in combat with or without a gun. Okay. P.S. Space Academy is legally obliged to inform you that the accuracy of this assessment is 23%. Okay, right. I confirm this. So now what do we do? Okay, here we go. So can we zoom in and have a look around? Oh, I quite like this. Okay, so there's our little shuttle. So yeah, our big ship was called the Bulta. So this is kind of like a little shuttle of the Bulta. So the Bulta 01. And this, can we zoom out and look at the whole big thing? Yeah, there we go. This is the station that we've landed on. This is the space wreck. A lot of it does look sort of greyed out, so we can't see, but it says Krogus on there. There's kind of a big kind of, you know, world planety statue thing over there. Some sort of dome type thing here by the look of it. And then there are some sort of communication dish type things with a little ladder by the look of it. So maybe we can get up here somehow. Possibly that's something we do later on. Um, and then here over here, there is something else. It looks like a great big spaceship's kind of crashed into this station. It looks like that's kind of wedged in there. I don't think that's supposed to be there. I think that might have been there. Yeah, on accident, shall we say that. That's not supposed to be there. Um, I do wonder if maybe that's why the spaceship is now all kind of you know, broken and derelict. Because that thing crashed into it and then it just caused so much damage that it was abandoned and now it's kind of just all falling apart. And there's another thing over here. The Spreditis. The Spreditis. So that looks like a spaceship as well. That does seem to have a hole in the front, but is that up and running? Are people from this ship also on the station looking for fuel? I do not know. Okay, so what do we have going on? Oh, look, we get a little kind of report thing. Oh, it's like a sort of choose your own adventure game type thing. You exit on an old dilapidated landing pad. In front of you is a huge metal structure with multiple glass domes. Unfortunately, everything looks damaged and left in total disrepair for decades. Okay. Right, so that's us. What's that? Remains. Oh, there's some remains there of something. Oh, there's a body floating around over there. Okay, this is all a bit grim. Uh, can we go inside, please? Can we go inside? Now, can we turn the camera around? Is it like that? Can we move the camera? I don't think we can. I think we're on this view. This point of view is what we have. Um, okay, so can we just walk over to that? Yes, we can. Okay, um... What have we found? These are the remains of a destroyed robot. Okay, so SciTech examine it. So maybe, because we did pick a point in that, we can possibly examine it and find something useful. Okay, so we've rolled some... Oh, we're literally rolling dice. Okay, I don't know what we had to do there. I don't know what the success roll was, but we, we did it. Hooray! Um, I think did we roll three dice. I don't know if we rolled three dice and I'm not quite sure. There are certainly some undamaged components here that could be salvaged. To be honest, the overall damage may even not be so critical. Okay, so dismantle the innards or repair the robot. I mean, might a robot friend be useful? Possibly a little robot buddy could be quite handy. Either just to question to find out what happened or possibly if they could come along and, you know, sort of boot people on the nose or whatever so we don't have to, that might be quite useful. Do we try to repair it, or do we just get the insides for scrap parts? I think we try to repair it. Let's give it a go, shall we? What else are we going to use the internal scrap parts of robot for? I don't quite know. So let's try to fix it, shall we? You need a soldering item and some electronic junk to patch up the bot. Also, an RC controller is needed to actually control it. Oh, okay. So we could leave it behind and come back to it and repair it later. Does that now appear on our to-do list? Uh, no, it does not. Oh, no. Is that a thing I have to remember to do? 
Oh, botherations. Okay, so the fuel chip, that's the thing we need to fix the big ship that we're the captain of. And then also to do is guzzoline, find fuel somewhere on the station and refuel a shuttle. Okay, yep. Yeah. And then get inside, find a way into the ship, into the station. Okay, uh, yeah, we're sort of, uh, we're sort of stuck outside. If you want to get fuel, you have to find a way to access the rest of the station first. Okie doke, right, so I think we leave the robot there for now. How to captain. Oh, this is fun, a little book, we have a little guidebook. Okay, here we go, skill checks and dice rolls. Sometimes your skills are tested by dice rolls like we just saw. To determine outcome, the game rolls four dice with plus one, zero, minus one sides and adds the rolled numbers to your skill rank. Then it compares it to a hidden difficulty. Your chance of success is estimated by phrasing like easy, 50-50, unrealistic. Most rolls are permanent though. If you're quick, you can retry failure, but only a limited number of times you'll focus in total. Know that both success and failure can branch a story and open new options. So yeah, if something does go wrong, that might not necessarily be a terrible thing. It might just open up other avenues elsewhere, which I do quite like. Okay, so it rolls four dice with plus one, zero, minus one, and then it adds our roll number to our skill. So in that situation, we had a side tech of two, so it rolled four dice, and then it added two to whatever pluses it got, and then it compared it against some value that we didn't know. Okay, and that says quick, uh, click quickly to retry this skill check. Okay, so we can just click down here then to try to do it quickly if it doesn't look good. Okay, okay, that's quite good. That's handy to know. Thank you for the How to Captain book. That's wonderful. Um, okay, there's a door there. Is it worth popping over and trying the door? So can we try the door? Ah, okay. That seems to have opened. Can we go in? Uh, yes, we can. Okay, what's that? Something dropped. A hairpin. Uh, do you know what? We'll take a hairpin. That might be used for yeah, picking locks or whatever. So we'll take that. Also, that didn't weigh anything, which is quite handy. Oh, here we go. Items. Keep it light. You don't need to pick up every item you find. No, it's not like Fallout 4 particularly, where you go and pick up literally all the junk items and scrap them. There's a lot of junk out there, but your carry capacity is very limited, as is even more limited. Yes, yeah, so hairpins, lock picking, painkillers for healing, tools and junk making something, alcohol if you can't speak to people. So maybe we don't need to pick up alcohol. Is there tea? Can we have tea? Food for a temporary carry capacity boost. The only item you really need is the fuel regulator on a spacesuit. Okay. Right, this is fine. Uh, fix it weapons and armor to save space. Uh, okay, so we can fix things if we have to. So what do we have on then? So captain's uniform, captain's quarters key card. That's going to do no good right now because we're not on that ship. The bolter shuttle key fob, the brochure that we're looking through, and a hairpin. Okay, so what's the biggest thing that we're carrying? Captain's uniform? Oh, hang on. Is it, is it, was that everything? Is that all things? Okay, yeah. So why are we carrying 5.7 when we shouldn't be... We should be carrying 0 0.7. Okay, never mind. Whatever the case. Um, so there's a door just here. So pop that door open and come through... Oh, hello. Hi. There's somebody. Hey, somebody. How are you? There is a corpse floating over there. Are you aware of this? Let's have a chat with you. Hello, somebody. How are you? Oh. Hello. Okay, perception, read her personality. Okay, give that a go, look. So, where do we have to click to see if it worked? Oh, success. Okay, hooray. A woman in her early 40s, she radiates both confidence and humorous optimism. She has many scars, but also a friendly smile. You get the feeling that she's not malevolent. On the contrary, she's open and even friendly. However, you sense that if crossed, she's more than capable of pushing back. Okay, so she's okay. She's not an enemy. That's quite good. Hello, <laughs> that's quite good. Hello, with an exclamation mark, not just hello, more of a hello, hi, look, we're here. Excuse me, but who the heck are you? Actually, I'm the captain of a stranded passenger ship. I'm just a scavenger, none of your business. Let's be truthful. Let's be truthful, because that's got to be a good thing. She seems like quite an open person. So, yeah, I'm the captain of a stranded passenger ship. Passenger ship? As in from Earth? Oh, la la, but what are you doing here? I'm looking for a fuel chip. We got stranded when somebody fired an iron torpedo at us. I ran out of fuel. Let's just say I was nearby. I mean, both those top two are true. We are looking for both of those things. We ran out of fuel, but we're also looking for a fuel chip. Um, let's say we're looking for a fuel chip. Let's tell her that. Pirates, makes sense. I'm not sure you'll find the chip here. One of those shipwrecks would have been a better place. This station has no engines, you know. I ran out of fuel on my way there. 
and ended up here. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. Ah, well, in that case, you're kind of in the right place. There should be a ton of fuel here. Oh, cool. But that is why we are here too. And I'm not sure if Vilnius is ready to share with anyone. You'll have to ask him. Oh, okay. Yeah, so she's laughing. Okay, so yeah, you're also here. You're from the big orange ship, aren't you? You're also here to try and rob the, I mean, borrow resources from the place. Okay. Tell me about Vilnius. Okay, who is Vilnius? He is, well, he's not the captain, but everyone, including the captain, listens to him. So he's sort of a leader of this small group of people I'm with. Okay, does he control access to the fuel? Well, admittedly, no, at least not yet, but it's only a matter of time. Okay, where can I find him? On the promenade, right in the middle of the station. That's where the bar, the shop, and the dance floor are. There's a dance floor. Oh, yes, dance floor. I mean, there was one 20 years ago. There's no more dancing here these days, of course. Oh, just you wait. Ah, uh, there can be dancing again. Me and you. Let's go and do the waltz or something. Uh, okay, so where can I find him? I think we've asked all these questions, haven't we? We know who he is. He's in the middle bit. Near, the, near where there should be a dance floor. Does he control access to the fuel? Not really. Uh, I see. Okay, let's change the topic. So you said something about your suit being damaged. Uh, maybe we can deal with that last cam bot together. What happened here? Could you tell me a bit about yourself? Who are you? And that uses charm. And we are very good at that. Let's give that a go, shall we? So yeah, we should be fine with this. It's a pretty safe one. Three. Okay, we didn't get any decent numbers on the dice, but I think because our charm is so high, it worked anyway. My name is Finn Allison, but people usually call me Finn Alley. Sometimes, jokingly, they call me Miss Finale. Oh, I see what you did there. Why? Um, finale as in, yeah, uh, hang on. Finale sounds awfully close to Finale. Finale as in the ending. Yes, I mean, after the collapse, I decided that I wasn't going to rot on some space wreck, barely surviving. I wanted to return to Earth or die trying. Okay, so I jump from station to station, from shipwreck to shipwreck, always looking for a way to inch closer to my goal. I take chances, and as a consequence, more often than not, I end up in tricky situations, not unlike this one, where I've got to wonder, sometimes loudly, is this your finale, Finn Ali? You talked yourself out loud. I talked to myself out loud, though. That's absolutely fine. What did you expect? I don't have anybody to talk to. When you're always on your own, you start to get weird. Okay. So we could try this one here because again it's speech and we're okay at speech we've got three points in it i think you know i could get you to the earth let's give that a go let's try shall we um that oh yeah absolute success with that one that was pretty good what do you mean you have but a small shuttlecraft ah but it's from a bigger ship you're not kidding okay let's assume it's true you have a ship but why do you think there is a but but she needs a fuel regulator. We were attacked and our engines were damaged by an ion torpedo. Yeah, let's be truthful about it. Ah, I see. Sepicoda did a number on you. So now you are scouring the wrecks of the spare part. Makes sense. Okay, what is Sepicoda? What is that? Sepicoda is a ship, originally an engineering support vessel after rebellion. The crew sort of became pirates. While they usually scavenge wrecks like the rest of us, sometimes they engage ships or raid survival hubs to take what they need by force. Okay, so Sepakoda is a bit of a rebel ship. A pirate ship, effectively. Thankfully, we escaped. If you ask me, I'd say these guys are the reason nobody tries to help us. Why would anyone help outlaws and space raiders? Anyways, my point was, with your knowledge of the junk space and experience, we could find the regulator in no time. That is true. For example, I wouldn't be looking for a fuel chip on this station, for starters. Okay, why not? Do we have to go to that other ship? Have we got to get the fuel from the station? but then break into the big orange ship and nick their fuel chip. Is that what we've got to do? Uh, okay, so, well, yeah, why not? Um, this is a station, not a ship. Stations don't have engines. Do you see the problem here? No engine, no fuel regulator. Okay, yeah, I, we've kind of been through this. That wasn't my intention. I had to make an emergency stop here because my shuttle suspiciously ran out of fuel. Thank you, original crew members. Out of fuel? Sheesh, man. Did a black cat zigzag in front of you this morning? Possibly. I don't know. It might have been in space, so I didn't see it. I'm not quite sure. Okay, here's the thing. Your pitch. I'm not feeling it. You may have a ship nearby, even though that could also be a load of old nonsense, it says there, potty mouth. But let's assume you have it. You need that engine part, and you also have freaking Sepakoda hot on your tail. Trust me, they won't give up so easily. And to top it off, you're literally stuck here without fuel for your shuttle when you put it like that. I mean, yeah, the situation isn't great, but we're Betty Cupboard. We can do this. Uh, but I would be okay to wing it. You would? 
Hold your horses, I join you if you get the fuel. If we can launch right away, I'm ready to take a chance. Easier if you help me. If you don't mind me asking why, what convinced you deal, when I find a fuel cell for my shuttle, I'll drop by. Let's see what happens. Uh, it would be easier if you helped me. Uh, kid, I'm not even 100% sure you're telling the truth. Right now, my chances are better if I don't stir up trouble with the guys here. I don't want to burn potential bridges just yet, but as I said, I'm ready to risk it if you have a functional shuttle. Okay, what convinced you? Your equipment is brand new. The shuttle, I haven't seen this model before. It looks a bit like it's from the future. And you seem young. Way too young for the junk space. The rebellion took place 20 years ago, and since everyone's sterile, there's no way you could be from around here. Hence, I have a gut feeling you're telling the truth. Oh! Okay, so the rebellion somehow made everybody sterile. I'm not quite sure. Was that something that one side did to make sure that you know, there wouldn't be any kind of offspring produced to end the war that way? Kind of playing the long game? I do not know. Okay, smart. Well, I'm glad you decided to help me. Okay, so when we've got a fuel cell for the shuttle, I will drop by. Until then, I think I'll stick to my original plan. Okay, what is the original plan? I uh, can't discuss it. It does not involve you. Okay. Uh, okay, so, oh, hang on, what's this? Do you mind answering questions? Uh, oh, hang on, hang on. So this could be useful. Uh, what about your suit being damaged? Indeed, unless I find another spacesuit, I'm stuck here. My suit's radio is busted, so I can't call for help. But hey, I've been in worse situations. I could try to find you a spacesuit. If you get me a spacesuit, I can definitely disable the robot from that room over there. Then it's a safe passage for both of us from here. And I'll be eternally grateful to you for saving my life. Okay, noted. Can I ask you a question? Okay, so there is some sort of robot nearby that we haven't found yet, which possibly might try to kill us to death. Okay, what happened here? What happened on the station? Uh, I ran into a couple of cambots. They're surprisingly vicious little peoples. Um, I usually avoid them. You can always get round one or disable it from a security terminal, but this time they ambushed me as soon as I entered the room. One of them managed to damage my spacesuit before I destroyed it. I didn't want to engage the other one and retreated back here to plan the next step. That's when you suddenly barged in. Okay, so there's only one exit, and yeah, the cambot is guarding it. Yes. I mean, there is, uh, there is the way I came here, just fly over the gap on the other side, buying a spacesuit for that, and mine's bust. So the only alternative is to get past this cambot and hope the corridor behind that door is airtight all the way to the promenade. Okay, right, so we're not in a good situation here. This is a bit of a bother. I could take care of the robot. I reckon together we can take him. I think I can find a way around it, or our way is screw goodbye. Um, I mean, we have got a point in Psy Tech. So we could possibly try to take care of it, but um, possibly better if we go round it. I think I can find a way around it, maybe. Smart move. There's no need to risk your life if you can simply avoid the danger altogether. Okay, and then is that kind of it? Is that it? Oh no, can you tell me about the ship on the other side of the station? The big kind of orange one. That's the Spiriditis, and I came here with it. You might run into the rest of the crew on the promenade. Ah, okay, right, yes. Are they friendly? They won't shoot you on sight, if that's what you're asking but don't touch their stuff and stay away from the ship. Like everyone in junk space, things can turn ugly quickly if one side feels threatened. Heck, I might even shoot you on the spot if you start acting weird. Okay, one more thing about that ship. Are they part of the crew? Would it be possible for me to get a tour of the ship? I imagine she's gonna say no. Uh, no, forget about it. If you've got a spaceship, even a tiny shuttle, you're the top dog in junk space and you don't risk this privilege, uh, it'll get you shot for shot. Okay, no, let, let's, I don't wanna get shot, thank you. I think, we're gonna go. Okay, so come out of here. Oh, it's one of those, look. It's one of those, but it's not broken. So it's over here and it's saying do not shoot. Um, okay, okay. So is it worth popping over to that door? Citizens, stay back. Uh, okay, we, we are back. We, we've left the room entirely. It's all absolutely fine. Can we open that door and come this way? Is there, oh, hang on, remains. What's over there on this dead person? Overalls, some bad overalls, no thanks. A screwdriver might be handy. That could be useful. So we'll take that. That's a massive one. We have got to be quite careful. A Krogus 3 toilet pass. Do you know what? We'll take a toilet pass, a piece of pipe, and some bad overalls. Um, I mean, yeah, do we take a piece of pipe? The condition is only 27%. It's not a very good piece of pipe. Um, Joe, no, we're okay. We're okay with that, but we do have a toilet pass, and there is a toilet terminal right there. So do we use the toilet pass on the toilet terminal? But I think if we go there, are we going to possibly get shot a bit? 
I don't want to get shot because that might hurt us and that's going to be a bit sad. Uh, I think let's try and come down here and a warning. Okay, use that thing. Oh, okay, hang on a minute. Detected. Okay, right. We got detected. We're now in combat. Okay, this is what we don't want to do. We've got no way of doing any fighting whatsoever. We have to run off. We need to leg it out of there. So fights a turn base. Every participant moves or attacks one after another, a bit like in chess. Everything costs action points. Movement is one AP per step. Okay, so now we're in combat. The action points kind of come into, into their own. Uh, guns at point blank range deal extra damage. Better keep a distance. End the turn with spare AP to get a chance to evade the next attack. Okay, so our action points appear as sort of um, a little kind of lit up things over here. Click on the enemy for attack options. Our health is down here, all of nine. Uh, we've got a reload option, but we can't reload because currently we haven't got anything to reload. And continue or try to switch off combat. Oh dear, right, okay. Okay, this could be the end of things very quickly. Detected. Right, I think six action points gets us near to that door. So possibly round the corner might be quite good because then we might not get shot. I think if we go to there, look, and hide around the corner, that's five action points. So if we go over here and just stay out of the way and then switch combat off, can we do that? Come out in combat with hostile creatures nearby. Okay. So that is a bit of an issue, isn't it? We could go there, but I feel like if we do stand there, there's a bit more of a clear line of sight between us and the robot. I mean, can the robot shoot at us? Does it have guns or does it need to come, you know, poke us in the head with a sharp pointy robot stick or something? I'm not quite sure. Um, we will end our turn. We'll keep one action point left behind because apparently that means we might be able to evade the next attack. So end our turn. Uh, okay. And now we just detect it again. Okay, so what if we just go out here? What if we go out here, look? Does that door shut? Can we now switch combat off? Right, okay. We now stand down from combat because we're out of sight of that thing. Okie dokie. Right. Okay, so that wasn't great. That didn't work entirely according to plan. There is a body there, though. So where else could we possibly go? There's a, there's a warning sign there, possibly warning us about the terrifying robot thing. As we can't go out that way, that's no use. Going through here, maybe. Hang on, can we run here and use the... Can we go back in here, look? The robot is then not going to fight us again. Okay, that's fine. If we go here, is the robot getting a bit sort of grumpy with us? What if we go there? Do not approach, it says. Stay back. Okay, so how near can we get to you before you get a bit fighty? Because we have got a toilet door keycard and we could potentially go into the toilet and maybe find some useful things in there. I'm not entirely sure. Is it worth possibly trying to run around the corner and get in here? I think it might be worth a go because if we do get in there, then we'll be out of sight of the robot and then the combat will end anyway. So if we try and run around here, ah, it says stay back, use the key card on the door and then go inside here. What's in here? Uh, oh, a lunchbox, a soldering iron, space food paste, bottled water, welcome terminal, cat tube access key card. Hang on, hang on, soldering iron. We'll take that for a point of carry weight. Space food paste. Okay, we'll have that. Bottled water could also be useful. And welcome terminal cat tube access key card. Okay, cat tube. What, what does that mean? What's a cat tube? A, a cat tubular in the future now? I'm not quite sure what we do with that. Um, right, there are the stairs down. So we need to get over there. Um, What's down here? Hang on, can we kind of come back this way? Right, yeah, warning, yeah, we're going away, robot face. All right, calm down, good grief. Right, so if we go here, look, if we stand here, what's sort of over here? Can we see what's through here? Oh, there's a room over here. Ah, right, can we get in? Can we walk in? Yes, we can. Okie doke, we can walk into here. Okay, so possibly... We can just walk around this way to avoid the robot. Okay, but we did get in there and pick up some stuff. Okie doke. Right, what's on here then? Um, junk and a can. We'll take some junk because maybe that means we could potentially repair that thing over there. But yeah, we're going to need an RC unit or whatever it said. A uh, wrench, laser drill, but oh, these are all sort of good sounding things. But I don't, I mean, we're already at half carry capacity. Do you know what? We'll take everything we find for now. And then if it gets a bit too much, 
we'll just put things down. We'll just put things down again. Spacesuit storage. Uh, oh, hang on, hang on. Medical stuff will be useful, and it's a tiny amount of mass. We can pick up quite a few of those. That's handy. So I didn't, I didn't see what we picked up there. Painkillers, useful. Stay awake pills. They help you overcome sleepiness. Okay, so maybe that gives us more action points, possibly. Uh, we've got a wall terminal. I think the door just opened. I think we went near the door. Disable security bots, please. Yeah, do that. Missing security ID card with appropriate clearance. We could try and hack it. Should we give it a go? Ah, yeah, let's give it a go. Uh, I don't know if we can reroll it or not. Did it work? Success, yay, okay. So we've done some stuff. Yep, there we go, log in. Welcome super user, thank you very much. Initiate self-destruction of security bots. Adjust friend or foe settings, direct control or exit. Okay, adjust friend or foe settings. Let's give that a go, shall we? What did we go with? Oh, loads of plus on that one. Okay. You identify the code routine where the robot determines whether the target is friendly or hostile. From that, you find the correlating database. And a few alterations later, the robots are now on your side. Okie dokie. So now we can walk in here and the robot isn't shooting at us. Okay. And that's kind of what this game is all about. If we came in as a strong character with loads of hit points and loads of damage, we could have run up to that and you know, bashed it with a pipe or shot at it with a gun from over here or whatever. But, but no. We've kind of switched that off and now it's going kind to of happily just sitting there, which is wonderful. Uh, right, there are some remains over here. What have we got? Uh, we'll take a screwdriver and we'll take another hairpin because I don't think they weigh anything. So that's quite good. We are filling up our carry capacity, however. Um, there is the welcome desk and also, yes, yeah, spacesuit storage is locked. Using this, can we open that and get her a spacesuit? Because of your complete lack of computer skills, you push the wrong button and accidentally crash this terminal so hard, it won't boot up again. Okay, <laughs> brilliant. Okay, we've jabbed a button so hard, the computer has now gone entirely wrong. Okay, can we open this? The container is locked with an electronic lock. You need the correct key card to open it. Okay, can we try to pick the lock? Can we do that? So it's a 50-50 chance. Okay, re-roll that. I'm sure you want to try to re-roll this check. You have three re-rolls left. Whatever, ever, 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 or just on this particular thing. Because if there's only three re-rolls left in the entirety of the game, I don't want to use it on opening this thing. Um, should we, we just do one? We'll do one. There we go. We'll try one. It was a 50-50 chance. Um, failure. We'll try, uh, no, that, we won't do it again. We won't do it again, it's fine. You try to find the right circuitry, but can't make sense with the wires and relays. Okay, uh, right. So we've burnt one hairpin. Uh, that is a bit of a nuisance. It would be quite good if we could get in there, uh, but alas, we cannot. Uh, we can't use a computer terminal because that's completely broken. Uh, that thing is now no use. That thing is no use. Okay, let's come back around here then. So what's through here? We've got, what is that? A box of some kind, an R ah, an RC controller, and electrical cartridges. We'll take all of those. I don't know what we do. Very common battery former. Oh, it's just kind of like a battery. Uh, I think we might have what we need to try uh, to repair that robot there to try to give that a go. So let's go over here. Look. So yeah, examine. Uh, examine. I think we've done this already. Yeah, we did that before. And yeah, try to repair the robot. So it does seem a soldering iron, some electrical junk to patch up the bot, and an RC controller is needed. Uh, soldering iron? I think we have such things, do we not? Hang on, inventory. We've got a soldering iron. We've got... Oh, it's just junk. It's not electrical junk. Oh, okay. Right, so maybe not an RC controller. So we've got quite a lot of what we need, but we haven't got the final thing we need. We need some electrical junk. Okay, no, crap, we can find that somewhere around, I'm fairly sure. I think let's go through that door there. So let's pop that open, use the key card. Okay, so that's opened up. And now there's a warning sign. There is a warning sign on the wall. It says climbing the air vents is strictly forbidden. Okay, vent. Oh, can we go in the air vents? You see a standard ventilation access hatch. You can feel slight but persistent draft inwards. It seems this is the main way the air gets into the next room. You could also squeeze through if you were small enough. Oh, hang on a minute, hang on. Believe, we don't need to do that, look. So we'd go through that vent and out the other side, but we've got the key card. 
so there's no point in trying to squeeze through. Oh, and I imagine, yes, as we saw earlier, if you have a really high physical, I bet you're really huge and you can't fit through the vents. Okay, that makes sense. I quite like that. So again, here, look, there's a vent. So if you don't have the key card, you can try and go through the vent. Okay, right, so open that and pop into here. Just walk in. What do we have? Is everything safe? Are we going to get shot? Uh, let's have a look at this. What is this? Hello there. I am FAQ man. Ask me anything. Oh, you've got a happy smiley face. Um, okay. Oh, we can shout abuse at it. Don't do that. That's not nice. Examine. In front of you is a typical interactive touchscreen stand with a built-in AI assistant. Its sole purpose is to provide answers to all the boring and basic questions that the staff of the ship has already been asked millions of times. It sports a huge ASCII smile and, of all things, a Southern American accent. Oh, okay. Okay, so we didn't say hello, though. I'm not going to do the accent, but it said that, but in a Southern American accent. Imagine that. I'm not going to do that because I, I'll, it'll be bad and, and it'll just be all sorts of terrible. Uh, okay, so what kind of questions do we have? How does the space toilet work? Okay, it's a good question. How does the space toilet work? I see you've got your priorities straight, sport. Bathroom on this ship, and most of the modern spaceships, is a multifunctional self-contained sealed capsule that provides poo-poo and pee-pee -pee disposal as well as a shower. Oh no, even at the same time if you feel inclined. No, 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 that, no. There are levels of wrongness, and then there's doing that as well as having a shower at the same time. That's all done in the name of efficiency and the preservation of resources. The capture recycles all the fluids on the spot. It's a closed system, so don't worry, we won't run out of water for a shower, if you know what I mean. Uh, so it recycles... I, I, I'm fine for a shower, uh, but um, the microgravity and uh, poopy. Ah, yes. As with most things, uh, pee pee and poo poo would float in space, and that would be unsanitary. Since we can't realistically feed you with magnetic power to ensure your poop sticks to metal, ha ha ha, the capsule employs the power of suction to guarantee that disposed substances go where they should. You can so that it sucks. Get it? Ha ha ha. Okay, I feel slightly unsettled by you. I feel slightly unnerved. Even though you've got a happy smile, you are laughing way too much. Okay, are you going to be the big bad? Are you going to be the big bad? Are you evil? Do you want to kill us? Um, okay, why is there gravity? I mean, fuel. Where? How can I refuel? Um, oh, hang on. We got some XP. According to FAQ, man, fuel is... Oh, bother. Okay, I didn't read that. Um, I can see you're a straight shooter. Well, I can respect that. The fuel is stored in the central core of the station, but our helpful staff will assist you. No need for you to carry the heavy fuel cells up from the basement yourself. Okay, so where am I? Uh, Yeehaw, that must have been a crazy night if you don't know where you ended up. Hey, partner, this is a space station. Krogus, possibly the most fun place in the belt. And I'm not just saying that, that literally is one of its main functions. Can you believe it, Spot? Because Earth is so far away, Perkins Limited created a hub for miners to unwind after hard days, uh, months of work. While mostly renowned for its bustling non-stop night party on the promenade, Krogus is actually a very convenient meeting place, as it is literally right in the middle of the region. It is also a logistics outpost where ships can drop off and pick up cargo at any time. And finally, this is a refueling station that keeps shuttles in local routes running. Okay, that's what we want to know. Um, I think we'd have, oh, we're okay for the stuff, I think. I think we're okay. Okay, so I think now is that, ah, I was going to say, is that the space toilet? But no, that's a, that's a space elevator. Okay, we'll come around this corner. What's over here? Uh, a lot of, oh, there's more robots. Ah, but are those robots our buddies? Are they our friends? Are they on the same kind of you know, control loop as this one? Or are they going to possibly shoot at us a bit? There is a door just here. Can we have a look through that door? What's in here? Uh, there is Krogus terminal, access terminal, a container, sleeping pills and a nail. Um, we'll take the sleeping pills. We'll take all the nails as well because they might be useful to make something might be useful for crafting i suppose uh okay what's that what is this a public general access terminal visitors or just people who don't have their own computer or screen slate oh i quite like the idea of a screen slate can use this to access shipnet okay so a very simple internet okay so what is shipnet exactly uh, okay it's got a thing i kind of feel like that should go beep, 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 and have like a little loading noise social network global news submit request turn off um submit request uh, food delivery, 3D print, medical or return. Oh, you can get things kind of delivered to. Oh, we can get like 
sort of food delivered. We can get like space takeaway. Okay, this is brilliant. Um, food delivery. Please make the safety deposit of 50 PC and the server will be with you. Oh, I don't think we have any PC. Do we have any PC? There's a button there that says lie. I'm going I'm to press the button that says lie. I've only just noticed that. I'm going to press it. Oh, oh, those little bits light up. I don't think it's doing anything, but okay. It just lights those up. Okay. Uh, right. Uh, we haven't got 50 minutes. This is all going to cost money, isn't it? The request. Global news. July the 9th, 2075. Oh, there's loads. Oh, there's so much stuff to read. Okay. Okay. There are many things going on. Okay. This is, this is all fun. All fun. So if you want to, you could dig into that and really read into every single little bit of lore and history and news and events and everything. There is a lot going on. Social network. View the messaging board. Can't connect to the messaging board server. Boo. Okay, never mind. Um, okay, doke. Right, so come out of that then. Let's go back out here. Can we check if these robots are going to try to kill us? So if we go to those remains, uh, Kroger's a security key card. That could be useful. However, a shock baton. Maybe we take that and equip that as some sort of very basic weapon just in case we run into trouble and we're already filling up our carry capacity. Electric cartridges, take all of those. Don't take the uniform. Um, how do we hold a thing? How do we hold the shock baton? Ah, equip. Okay, right, so we've now equipped a poor quality shock baton, but it's better than nothing at all, I suppose. Um, do we not have to equip the captain uniform? Uh, I don't know what it... I assume we'd already be wearing the captain's uniform um it gives us a point of speech but we're not we've not just put that on here oh, hang on a minute are we not dying are we not taking damage from be from suffocating or is there now air on this bit have we now got air in here okay don't go here without a spacesuit on because that will mean we're going to die but yeah look she's not wearing a spacesuit so okay indoors is okay right we've got our fancy captain suit on look oh that's quite good <laughs> there we go Captain Betty. Uh, right, let's just poke our head around the corner. Are you too friendly or are you going to try to shoot us to death? Ah, right. Okay, stay back. Right. No, absolutely. We obey. I, I obey my robot overlords. I'm just going to go over here and not anger you because you'll probably shoot me to death. Uh, there is an elevator there. I did notice as well, there are some stairs over there. Where does that go? Into some sort of lower bit? But is it a huge lower bit? Or is it just a little kind of room down there? I right, do you know what? We're going to come back over here. We're going to nip down those stairs and see what there is. There might be really useful stuff. There might be a great big death robot down there. I don't know. Let's go down the stairs. Right. So we pop down the stairs and we're taking damage. I think we took damage there. We're on one HP. Okay. Down the stairs... Uh, has no oxygen. Okay, that I don't know how that works in terms of surely it's then affecting up the stairs as well. Right, we nearly died from nipping down some stairs. We've now got one hit point. Uh, is there anything we can do to heal up? <laughs> that was not my intention there. That was not what I wanted to happen. Painkillers. Um, 20 hit points. So that'll get us back up to the top because we only have nine, of course. Do you use those? Okay, so we're back up to nine hit points, but now we can't heal up again. But I feel a bit safer now we've got the nine hit points back. Okay, I think then, go into here. I'm a little bit concerned. I kind of feel like we should always just wear the spacesuit. I feel like this is a bit dangerous otherwise. Uh, let's head over in that direction, shall we? What's through this bit over here? Hang on a second. Over there, I think, might be outside. I think that might be outside because look, there's that green flooring there and there's the green flooring there. Okay, hang on a second, hang on. Go to inventory, um, spacesuit. Yeah, equip the spacesuit, please. So now we're in that. So can we now go over here? And yeah, it was outdoors, look. It was outdoors. It's a good job we changed into that. Otherwise we would have taken more damage and then possibly might have died a little bit there, which is a bit of a problem. Okay, head back over here. There is an O2 meter down there. There is an oxygen meter. Are we supposed to keep our eye on this? I don't know. Okay, pop through here. Uh, shut that door behind us, please. There we go. Right, so a little bit safer in here. 
uh, circuit breakers, flathead screwdrivers, chemicals. Oh, we're in a storeroom. A little kind of storeroom type thing. A dragon card. Uh, a card for the game called For the Adventure and Glory. There's a huge fire-breathing reptilian creature on the front and the description says, An ultimate impersonation of terror, ancient magic and arcane power. Dragon can easily sweep away armies of men with a single blast from its lungs. Its power and... Okay, right. A little dragon card, which we might be able to use for trading, possibly. That could be handy, I suppose. Ah, here we go. Electronic junk. So if we take that and take another RC controller. Oh, dear. Right, okay. We are for... Hairpin, we'll take that. Uh, 3D ink cartridge. Okay, remember that's there. So we're nearly at our maximum carry weight. Anything else in here going to be of use? Chemicals. The chemical equivalent for a junk. Okay, so just like chemical junk. Um, actuator stabilizer, pry bar, hot plate, chemical. A flathead screwdriver might come in handy. Say 0.1 mass. We can pick that up. A burnt circuit breaker. That, that has no, that's got no thing at all. That's got no weight. So we might as well pick that up and carry that around as well. Anything else with no weight? Uh, nope, they, they contain weight. Any of these things? Oh, they're all quite heavy. Okay, so now, do we nip back to the very start and try to repair the robot that's out the front? Because it might give us some XP, possibly. I think that might be worth doing. Let's head back over here, look. Nip outdoors and try to fix that thing up. Now we've got all the right bits and bobs. Right, let's give this a go, shall we? Can we fix a broken robot? So examine it. We've done that before. So now we go to here. Uh, there we go. Tinker, repair the robot. And I think, yeah, that's now appeared because we have got the right bits. I mean, this isn't guaranteed. It's not a guaranteed thing. But, you know, we'll give it a go. So repair the robot. It's a bit risky. And we found, okay, re-roll it. Oh, I've only got two re-rolls left. Uh, okay, do you know what we'll use? Is it worth it, though? Is it worth it? What's the robot going to do? What's it going to do? Because we've only got two re-rolls left. I don't know how we get them back. I don't know how we refresh those, if we can. So maybe when they're gone, they're gone, and that's it. And we've kind of wasted them, and we should have saved them for a more important thing. Um, okay, I think possibly... We fail this. It's just going to be a thing that we tried and it didn't work. Yeah, I think we keep our re-rolls for something else. I think we keep them for something else. Um, and let, Hang on, but two re-rolls left. Did we try it already? No, we couldn't have done. We couldn't have done. No, okay, right, fail that. No, it's too much. We failed to repair the robot. Okay, we gave it a shot. We gave it a go. But yeah, if we repair it, it comes up with the same thing. Oh, we got two minuses. That's no use. That's why it went wrong. Okay, never mind. Um... Ah, bother. Okay, never mind. There we go. That's kind of what this game is about, though, isn't it? That's kind of how this game works. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Um, is it now worth nipping down these stairs again? Because now we've got the spacesuit on, we might possibly not die. Or is it just going to cause... Are we, getting, are we being gassed or something? Uh, no, we're not taking damage anymore. But it is all open to the, to the outside world. Yeah, look, over here, look. The wall's kind of blown open. There is a thing over there. Robot remains. Ah, okay, right. So uh, there is a surveillance terminal or a container that we can try to unlock. Uh, okay, a gun, a shooty gun. Okay, we'll take the shooty gun. Thank you. Electric cartridge. Take take all of those. We're nearly at carry capacity. A stealth shock bomb, an anti-robot weapon. We'll have one of those. Thank you. That sounds quite good. Uh, right, surveillance terminal. Uh, oh. We've, we've broken that one as well. We've, we've broken that computer. We're not very good at computers. Okay. <laughs> we've ruined that computer forever. Brilliant goers. Uh, what's on the weapon shelf? Can we get in? Can we go in here? How can we come around this way? Uh, can we open the door? Ah, here we go. Right. Come in through here then. So there's oh, a shotgun. I think... Hang on, hang on. Go to inventory. Go to weapons. I think we equip that thing. It's fair quality. So equip that. Keep the shock bat on. Just because that would be good for melee combat. Um, an E-pack. What's that do? Heavy duty power cells for the more demanding tools and weapons. Okay. So they're around. And then over here, more E-packs. A used shock bat on. Ah, hang on. That's better than our one. So where is the rubbish shock bat on yeah put that back into there so don't carry that around um combat knife e-pack electric cartridge 
Uh, take, I don't know, two of those. Take a couple of those. We've got all of one point of carry capacity left, but is it worth putting something away now? For example, the soldering iron, possibly? Um, okay, for now, let's keep what we've got. And then if we do need to drop things, we'll just figure out what we don't need later on. Okay, there are some floaty people. Oh, we've got we've got a gun. We've got it out and we're... Oh, hang on. Does that happen all the time? Right, hang on. How do we... Is that way we put it away? Ah, right, there we go. Oh, I see. We can choose between being armed and unarmed. Okay, right, that makes sense. Right, okay, that's good. Uh, right, hello. Sorry, you appear to be marginally dead. Uh, hairpin, we'll take that. That's useful for hacking. There is a robot there. So can we carefully make our way around here and go and check that robot remain out? Anything on here that we need to? Remains of a robot, examine it. We might as well have a little look. What happens with that? And we failed. We're not very good at rolling those dice. We're not very good. It's just a pile of junk. Okay, dokie, that's absolutely fine. Can we get through that? door no ah we just go that way okay that's fine if you've got anything a computer manual that might be useful because we are completely useless at computers we keep breaking them so that could be useful okay we'll take that thank you and then we'll head over to that door and we're gonna just have a nosy in here what's in here um a security spacesuit oh okay a bad quality one but if we take that, do you know, we'll take these because there's, there's no weight at all. However, the mass of that is 5.5. Okay. We do want to give the, the lady upstairs, whatever her name is, we want to give her a spacesuit. But that's too heavy. So we're going to have to put some things into here to then give it, pick up the suit, give the suit, and then come back and pick it all up. Do you know, that's fine. We can do that. Let's just put some stuff in here. So um, can we order it by weight? Can we find out what the heavy things are? Uh, so put the captain uniform into here. Uh, and then possibly, uh, what do we put in there? Screwdrivers. There are two. There, yeah, we don't need two of those, actually. There we go. And then put some, some space food paste in and then some bottled water. So that was still not quite at that point. Okay, and then put some junk in. Okay, and then take the spacesuit. Okay, it's so almost full. But now I think... We can go back up the ladder. I quite like this. Go back up the stairs. And then we can give her the thing. And then she can be happy. Okay, I found you a spacesuit. It's a bit rubbish, but it's better than no spacesuit. Hello, what's up? Oh, I have a spacesuit that I can give you. Oh, really? You got me a spacesuit for me? That's probably the nicest thing someone has done for me in years. You're welcome. Take it. Give spacesuit. Okay, so that one is now gone. And there we go. Very kind of you. Thanks. And now she's in a spacesuit. And for some reason, it looks like she's on the moon. But okay, you're very welcome. Now that you have a spacesuit, can you disable the cam bot? I mean, you don't need to anymore. We've, I've sorted that. It's all fine. That's all for now. I'll see you later. But we get XP for that. We get XP, which is what we want, of course, because more XP means we can level up and get more skills and such like. Right, okay, let's go and pick up all our stuff from down here. Okay, so pick up the captain uniform, pick up one screwdriver and those things there. So 20.33 out of 22. Oh, dearie me. Right, okay, back up here we go, though. So I think down here has been sort of exhausted. I don't think there's anything down there, really. I mean, we could back and pick stuff up if we need to. Oh, look. She is wearing the spacesuit. That's quite good. Uh, so we can come round here. Look and go that way. Uh, there is a wall terminal there. So I think let's head over here, nip outside, go through there and go to the wall terminal. Maybe that will give us control of these robots over here. And maybe if we're lucky, we can switch those off and have a look around that part of the station. OK, the robots are getting a bit shouty, but I think now we're out of their line of sight. So we should be able to look at that terminal there. Okay, so there we go, perk on. Right, let's disable the security bots. Try and hack it because we don't have a thing. Here we go, it's risky and we've failed. Okay, right, that's going to be a bit, uh, switch that off. Hopefully they don't get grumpy about that. Uh, can we go back in and try again? Can we do that again? Uh, we could try and just hack it. We could just try to hack the thing in its entirety using SciTech. Oh no, oh, that was kind of what we did before. Okay. Right, no, that's also gone wrong. We don't have a lot of joy with these rolls, do we? Okay, never mind. So we can't really go down there unless we're prepared to do some fighting. 
which we are not because we're rubbish at it. How about we meander through here, look. What's around here? How much have we actually covered of the of the ship, of the station? About half, I'd say. Well, it's slightly less than half because we've not been in that middle bit, but a good bit, and we have been down a level as well. Okay, okay, so we're working our way through. That's pretty good. Right, head through here. What's in here? Can we go in here? It looks a bit like, what is this? a little office of some kind oh a superintendent's office okay oh no there's a computer there's a computer over there okay right we're gonna break into the computer in a moment here we go can we blow up another computer uh, ah no it didn't explode uh planner okay so meeting with miss alamos then breakfast breakfast is first Breakfast, you should have breakfast first, then meet with Mr. Alamos. Meeting with that person, excursion to city side, fuel access, lunch, doctor appointment. Okay, oh, just a general kind of schedule for the day. Then recorded meetings. Oh, okay. Welcome, gentlemen. Let's discuss city side progress. Okay, what is city side? What is that? Uh, hello, excited to finally be here, says Darius. Wojcik, maybe, is that how you pronounce that? Uh, and then Tom says, me too, nice see you, Cray, uh, K, sorry. Uh, when uh, when do you have a tour of the city side planned? Uh, can we have it before 1500 today? I have another meeting scheduled, can move to tomorrow too. I was thinking right after our meeting, if that's all right, but first a quick update. Uh, oh, crikey. Uh, we are more or less on the schedule. City side is not open yet. Apartment block north is still under construction, unfortunately, but premium flats in the south of the new worker bedrooms of the west block are ready for people. There are still things to be done in the mall, but it's fully functional already, as you'll see today. Sounds great. How many floors does city side have? Phase one is two floors, the base floor and one above. If the project is a success, we can expand indefinitely. The infrastructure is already there. In a few years, this will be the first real space city in the belt. Okay, they're trying to build a space city. So at the moment, two floors, but then make it bigger. Okay, sounds really exciting. Investors are looking forward to that. You said infrastructure is there. What do you mean, says Thomas? Uh, for example, we've installed two powerful ventilators on the east and west blocks, each the same output as we have now for all of this side, the promenade and everything. For now, it is an overkill, but once we have seven to ten stories, the standard ventilation system just won't do it anymore. Okay, so they've got big kind of oxygen thingamajigs. Oh, yes, that is smart. Adapting later will be much harder and more expensive. Uh, okay, and then Darius says, I'm reading here that you plan workforce expansion of only 50 to 80%, but there are around three times as many beds planned in the new communal bedrooms. Shouldn't we have fewer beds or more workers planned? Okay, so it's not entirely going to plan. There are some questions. There's no mistake we're cutting the bunk sharing when two or three people sleep in the same bed at various times of the day in shifts. While efficient use of space, it's unsustainable in the long term. But that's how we do it everywhere. Bunk per person. This is an unimaginable luxury. We are overpaying millions. Oh dear, it is a bit dystopian around here, isn't it? In the long term, people are getting depressed or angry. At least we're dropping productivity and tension. This was never meant as a permanent solution, Darius. It's time to transition from a frontier to a settlement. Besides, Travis and the board know this. They signed off on the budget for this expansion already. So yeah, Kay is a little bit more so saying, yeah, give people their own beds for goodness sake. Why do we go see the city side now? Can talk more on the way. Uh, superb idea, let's go. Oh, by the way, I was wondering if the city side is uh, reversed, inverted, you know what I mean? So how do you go from the promenade to the city side? Isn't the promenade here? I think the promenade is where Vasilius or whatever it was that where somebody's waiting for us. I think somebody's there. Maybe we're going to find these buildings, possibly. Um, we have a revolving lift, an elevator that will turn around its axis while en route to the other side. Because of zero-g and magnetism, it really isn't a big deal, but still may feel disorienting. We're exploring other solutions, like a long circular walkway that gently curves around the station. We'll see. But for now, we have one test elevator. I expect that'd be a problem. After all, the rest of the stations are one-sided by design and you guys are breaking the mold. So where's the elevator? Follow me. It's on the other side of the promenade below the east docking platform, right by the 3D printing lab. Okay, so I kind of feel like that whole conversation led us to that bit just there. So there's an elevator on the other side of the promenade, right by the 3D printing lab that will take us to city side, whatever it's called. Okay. So I sort of feel like we need to go and find that as well. Um, let's, can we get out? Can we sort of walk around here? Ah, okay, we have to come around this way. That's fine. 
let's have a look across here then. So what do we have around here? Anything in this part of the ship? There's something there. Let's run away. Running away is what we're doing. It's saying warning and I don't like it. Away with you, robot face. Oh, you weren't there. You walked in. Go and walk back. Clear off over in that direction, robot face. You're too scary and I don't like it. And we're going to run away from you. Um, okay. I see a little bit of a problem. There are some stairs there. And I notice there are some stairs here. Maybe we need to go down a little bit. Then work our way across here and kind of come up over here somewhere. Because I don't know how we can get over into those rooms there. That's outside again, I think. Because that's green. It's got the kind of warning thing. So that's outside. These aren't outside, though, I don't think. Uh, okay. Okay, we need to get over there somehow and continue our sort of general sort of first little trip around the station. I mean, that bit's going to be big. And I imagine that's the promenade in the middle. But yeah, the promenade is a little bit trickier to get to on account of all the death robots that really do want to make us unalive. Okay, so we're back in the little storeroom over here and we are near to the stairs which will take us down. However, I think we will wrap things up for now and we will come back to this. I think we're going to have a little mini series of this. I don't know how long it's going to take for us to complete this. I've no idea. Is it going to be done next video? Is it going to take four or five parts? I really don't know, but I am quite intrigued and I do want to kind of finish it. I don't want to leave it there. I think we have had a good look at the game. We kind of see what it's all about and how it works. But I want to know more. I want to know more about the story of what's happening here. And can we even get to the end? Are we, as a very fragile Betty, going to be able to make it through to the end by just, you know, being talking and charming and such like? I mean, so far, we've only done a little bit of talking. So far, it would have been quite useful to have been a bit sort of more tech savvy because then we could have switched off more robots and done more repairs and all that kind of stuff. So at the moment... The talking hasn't really come in that useful, but we have only met one other alive person. So yeah, talking has been limited so far. There she is over there. So Finn Allison, and we helped her out, which is quite good. We got some XP for that, which is nice. But yeah, everything else has been either robots or you know, some dead floaty people. Not ideal. So uh, yeah, maybe when we come back next time, we can try to turn on the charm and use our sort of talking skills, which would be quite handy because you've not really got to see them much so far. But yeah, we've only covered, what, about halfway round of this level of the station. So of course there are more levels, we've been up and down and various bits and bobs, there's elevators and things, so there is a lot more to look at. So I think if we could kind of get round there next time, that'd be quite good. And then also, get into the promenade over here and then we know there are people there that we can chat to and then hopefully charm with our amazing Betty charms which would be good so I think yeah that would be quite good if we could do that but we have to come back I can't just leave it like this I need to know what happens we need to finish the story and see if we can get the fuel and the fuel chip and everything else and sail away and then take Finn with us I think if we can Finn is going to come with us, which is going to be quite fun. So we'll see what happens when we come back next time. I can't leave it where it is now. So yeah, we're definitely coming back and having a little mini series of this because I quite like it. I do quite like it. It's like a good old sort of an old school RPG, but it's a proper RPG. It's got all the kind of skill checks and things in and there are things you can't do because we haven't got the right skills. We keep blowing computers up and such like. So I do really like it. So yes, we're going to have a little mini series. We'll come back next time and see what we get up to here in Space Wreck. Hopefully you have enjoyed this. If you have, please do leave a like. That would be most marvellous indeed. And also, if you're not already, then please do subscribe to keep up to date with how we get on here next time out in Space Wreck. But for now, thank you very much for joining me in the Geek Cupboard and I'll see you next time. We are going to be known as the Keepers of the Tea. Betty is very clever. Oh, she's very clever. It's Betty. It's the hat, I think. So let's injure you. So, oh, okay, or not. <laughs> Fine, don't injure them then. It's a no from us right now, Robert. But you know what? Have this tea. Take this tea away with you. They've kind of died a bit. Okay. <laughs> Look at all of the tea we've got going on. This is wonderful. 